absolutely beautiful day today. And this airline, that is Delta Airlines, and they're going from Atlanta, Georgia, to Tokyo, Japan. Oh my God, in Japan. Have a safe flight, everybody. Okay, now the weather down here. Well, it's a nice day, not a cloud in the sky. Today is gonna be the only warm day for the next little bit. We get unsettled again for the weekend with more snow showers, especially Saturday into Sunday, and temperatures are gonna be on the cool side into next week. Incredible display of the Aurora Borealis. Look at this. Right over Brooks in the County of Newell. And the lights are dancing. Look at that. Wow. We got a show tonight. <laughs> Well, weather it's hot, weather it's cold, weather it's hot, Frankie's got the weather we got. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, weather it's cold, weather it's hot, Frankie's got the weather, weather or not. There it is. Can you get a picture together? Yes, let's do it. Say hi, Joey only. What, what do I say? Hi, Joey only. Hi, Joey only. I'm Frankie Down. You're listening to me. You watch the weather report, weather report every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 7 p.m. Lake Standard Time. Canadian Plus Meteorology. Joey only used to work for Vancouver Giants. He's a firefighter over in British Columbia. Terrible weather dude. Comedian Plus Meteorology. He has, a, he has a podcast on his YouTube channel. Joey only terrible weather dude. Joey only is a really nice guy. I'm on Joey only show every Thursday night. Talk about the weather all over the world. I'm on. And so the only shows on CFUR, 88.7 FM, Prince George, CKUWI 5.9, 95.9 FM, Winnipeg, and CFBX 92.5 FM, the Caleb's British Columbia. Joey only is a really, really, really nice guy. He fights fires in British Columbia and things like this. It's awesome. And Joey only shows us on Shaw TV and Shaw Spot Lake TV. Joey only is a really nice guy. I'm on his podcast every Thursday night at 11 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, 7 p.m. 92.5 FM. In Caleb's in 11 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, 7 p.m. Pacific, Stand Pacific Standard Time. Best luck to you. I'm Frank Dell. You're the Joey Only Show every Thursday night on his podcast, on his YouTube channel. Check him out. Say hi, Joey Only. Hi, Joey Only. Good morning, Prince George. Good afternoon, Winnipeg. And hello, Kamloops, Victoria, whoever else. Hello, YouTube World on Joey Only Caribou Weather Dudes channel here. Hello, Mom. Hello, everyone. I'm Joey Only. I'm your host here in Wells, British Columbia, and this is our show, The Comedological Report. Comedy plus meteorology equals comedology. It's your show about how much the weather sucks. And there's always lots to talk about, isn't there? Because, uh, well, that's like the number one topic in Canada besides hockey. You know, we just try, to try, to cover, try to cover it all around here if we can. You're listening to the show on C for 88.7 FM, where it all began in Prince George, CKUW 95.9 FM in Winnipeg. Hopefully CFBX 92.5 FM in Kamloops. And Shaw Spotlight, hopefully. We'll see. Okay, here we are with our show this week. And as it happens every time, we have our panel of meteorologists on to talk about the comedy meteorology sort of outtake on the weather going on all over the world. Number one is uh, Frankie McDonald, who's uh, late. There's a bad storm going on in Sydney, Nova Scotia. We hope there's power. It's like, you know, what a white Fiona Frankie's been going through their back-to-back uh, -back strong systems in Sydney, Nova Scotia. There he is. And we got Brandon Houck and Imogen Cookie Bailey. And of course, Joe Stover is finally back. And the Northern Lights are popping. So he's a good guy to talk to about that tonight. And here's Frankie. And I was right. He's inside tonight because the weather is garbage. Everybody, Frankie McDonald. Frankie, the weather man. Frankie, the weather man. Who? Frankie. Who? Frankie. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Frankie! Frankie, how you doing so far, buddy? I'm doing great so far. There's lots of snow heading for Portland, Oregon, Seattle, and Vancouver, British Columbia as well. They got cold air going out way down to Southern California as well. Give us the whole story, Frankie. We know there's uh, severe thunderstorms happening and, you know, big chance of uh, long track tornadoes tomorrow in southern parts of the United States. We know that the weather's changing here. My ears are popping like crazy. My sons are he's in total pain right now. The weather's bad after so many good days. And you're in the middle of a bad storm in Sydney too, aren't you, Frankie? Tell us everything. Yes. And that means a storm in Halifax too. In Maine, USA, and things like this. 
and the souls in Arkansas getting severe thunderstorms, chain lightning, fair amount of thunder, heavy downpours, large hail, damage, winds, possible tornado, accurate. They had an earthquake in Argentina today, 5 point something magnitude. That snowstorm, 30 centimeters of snow hitting city, Nova Scotia. It's going to drive all the way down to Oklahoma with, as thunderstorms. It's going to bring severe weather in Arkansas and all across southern Illinois, southern Indiana, Ohio, those places, and Missouri. It's going to bring severe weather in Arkansas to all the way down to Tennessee, Kentucky, and all these places. That's going to bring so much snow. Wisconsin, Friday night and Saturday, including Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, Atlanta. It's going to bring lots of thunder, severe weather in Atlanta, Georgia, and, and those places. It's going to get cold air in British Columbia as well. Cold air is returning to British Columbia, Washington, Oregon. It's going to bring more cold air in California as well. Frankie, you got a haircut. Sure, I cut my hair. Okay. Then, it got, then it got lots of snow in Michigan and Timmins, Ontario as well on Saturday. Timmins is getting more snow on Saturday where Jamie Klump lives. So Jamie Klump is in, is in Timmins? Yes. Very cool. It's good seeing you Timmins. back in your office at home again. That means that you're here with this. And it's going to bring lots of snow where Jamie Klump kids and Klump podcast is. Does Jamie Klump have an umbrella? Jamie Klump's getting lots of snow again. It's going to bring lots of precipitation on the West Coast in early April. Looks like it that way. It's going to remain cold there in Vancouver, Victoria. Yeah, for at least the first two weeks, it looks like, eh? Frankie, yeah. he's got the worst weather in the world right now. It's okay, right now. And it's Arkansas, they're getting a lot of severe weather, tornadoes, hail, and things like this. And so chance we're in the United States, like Tennessee, Kentucky. Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, it's going to bring lots of thunderstorms and rain in Brazil and in places like Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, and Colombia and those places. It's going to bring lots of thunderstorms there as of right now. Over how about, New York, to, how about over in Europe, New, Frankie? Lots of, lots of high winds and showers and rain and snow in Scotland, Wales, England, Ireland, <coughs> France, Norway's getting lots of snow, Finland, Sweden. Germany's getting lots of rain. Poland's getting lots of rain. Belarus and those places. And even Moscow's getting lots of rain too. Even all the way in Moscow, Russia, including Portugal and Spain are getting warmer temperatures in Spain. Then sometime next week, you've got cold air heading for Italy, all the way down to Greece. Even Turkey. Even Turkey? Yes. So I, I've got a two-part question for you, Frankie. Um, okay, where is the most haunted place in the world? Romania. Romania? Okay. Now, if a hurricane or a tornado hits Romania, do ghosts get thrown all over the place? Like, do they get scattered about, across the countryside? What, what about Dracula's castle? It could be damaged. Well, <laughs> good. So would vampire? is there a higher risk of vampires being thrown across the countryside, just strewn around? Yeah. Yeah? That means... Vampires is far above the light. So you, we, people in Romania need to be prepared for that. How exactly yes, do they prepare for a vampire Dracula, tornado? A Dracula is a vampire. They're weak against fire. Against fire? Yeah, and oh. against sunlight, right? So UV yeah. rays is a big, uh, UV a, a rays big and fire. on vampires. Well, most vampires can turn into bats too, right? And they got their wings, so they're probably able to ride out the storm a little bit. But and did you hear only at them? night, right? Only at night. Yeah. And did you hear about this? Then it got lots of storms coming off the coast of Japan, too. Northern Japan's getting snow in Sapporo, Hagayo, Japan. They're getting really cold air. Next week in Japan, like Tokyo, South Korea, North Korea, Five Yostok, including supposed to get some, some showers and lots of rain in southern China. They had a major sandstorm in China. Los Angeles had a big tornado. I was talking to you last night. Uh, Japan's had a lot of tsunamis. How big of a tsunami would it take to throw Godzilla across the smallest of the Japanese islands? Bigger. And then it got to lots of thunderstorms and rain in Uganda, Congo, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Mozambique, Madagascar, and those places, and Botswana. And South Africa is in the fall of the year now. Still get extremely hot temperatures in South Africa. And Mozambique, Madagascar, and those places. So, like Australia, New Zealand, they're getting still getting really hot temperatures in Sydney, Australia. Then it got some showers in New Zealand. Then it's starting to cool down a little bit in New Zealand because the, right now it's their fall of the year. It's the fall of the year there. Right now, 
Their winter starts on June 21st, 2023. Winter begins in New Zealand. Can I ask you a question, Frankie? Yes. Joe Stover, ask questions. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so apparently Los Angeles had a tornado rip through there the other day. Um, how, how rare is that for tornadoes yeah, to hit around uh, Southern California? Pretty rare. Yeah, it's only happened uh, 50 times in the last 50 years or something like that, right, Brandon? Yeah. Yes, uh, 50 times. I think last one was in, I have to look at that data again, but I think it was at least a 1980-something when the last uh, major tornado hit that area. So, But there's, yeah. there's no climate change, right? L- LA, who never sees snow, <laughs> is getting snow. Never sees tornadoes getting tornadoes. Everything's fine. Well, see, that's the thing is, though, yesterday on our live stream here on, on Joey Only Caribbean Weather Dude channel, Brandon and Frankie and I had this exact same question. I said, well, how rare is that? And then so we looked it up, and uh, there's been tornadoes reported in the greater Los Angeles region in 2018, was it, and 2014. And so maybe it's been a while since a major one's happened, but there's been like 50. It's more common than it is here in B.C., for all we know, at least. Uh, there's a lot of countryside here. Um, it's it's actually a lot more common than I thought. So I was surprised on that one, Joe. But again, the greater story being uh, California's just been getting pummeled. And uh, we were looking at some of the, the blocking patterns of where the, the, you know, the weather usually sits and where it has been sitting. And we've had the benefit of that here in BC where it's been pretty nice the last week until now. Like, as of right now, I got thinking, you know, like, I, I was imagining, like, had a tornado ever hit a pierogi factory? So I checked the records because I wanted to find out if a uh, pierogi tornado or tornado pierogi, if that was ever a thing that happened. And I can find no record of a tornado ever hitting a pierogi factory. So just uh, just to let you know, pierogi tornado, no, never <laughs> happened. I don't know about tornado stands or a uh, pierogi stands could have had, you know, like somewhere in and, you know, Vegreville, Alberta or something like that. Maybe some pierogies were blown over off of a, at a farmer's market or something. But uh, I can't find any pierogi factory tornado destruction. So I'll talk to my friends in Dauphin, Manitoba and see if there's any uh, if there's been any pierogi tornadoes. They they get some interesting weather in the Riding Mountains. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see if there has been any uh, pierogi related uh, extreme weather events out that way. Maybe I just got a But oh, no, all I get is recipes. Tornado Alley, you know, like a tornado dough as in like dough. So I don't see, you know, I don't see anything in the top of the, it's all about pierogies and not about tornadoes. So there we go. Frankie, what's the world doing in outer space? Oh my God, the aliens are here. What's that noise? Sounds like a flying saucer is coming. There's a dozens of aliens coming from planet Sedna, Eris, Ceres, and Quarwar. And another set of aliens coming from Andromeda Galaxy. There's an asteroid 2023 DW headed towards the Earth on Saturday. Is it going to hit the Earth? It's going to bypass the Earth. That's going to cause a gravitational pull. It's going to bypass the Earth altogether. There's, uh, we found a new asteroid that's coming by the Earth there, didn't you? It's gonna, there's another one coming on Saturday. Yeah, okay, another one coming on Saturday. And the Northern Lights are booming right now, aren't they, Frankie? What's going on with the sun? That means sun's rays are going to, more solar flares will be shooting from the sun. That's going to affect the satellites and things like this. Now we're nearing solar maximum in the next year or two, I think. So this is a, it could still get much better than we've been seeing. And it's been getting pretty good lately. And we'll have Joe Stover tell us all about that very soon, I'm sure. What about on Mars, Frankie? Up on Mars? What does that mean? Weather up on Mars is going to be different up there. Yeah, what's going on on Mars this week for the weather? Really, really bad storms somewhere on Mars right now because of sun solar flares. What videos did you make this week, Frank? I did a video about Wisconsin snowstorm Friday nights in a Saturday, and I did a major earthquake to hit Japan anytime soon. Right, right, right. In the year 2023, major earthquake, Frankie's called it on Japan, and he's never really wrong about these things, is he? What if happens if I get that earthquake prediction right for Japan? What does that mean? It means uh, people in Japan are prepared. It means your how record many, remains how many, perfect. How many, people, how many people are going to see my video then if I get this earthquake prediction right? You're like you're like the Mike Tyson in the '80s of weatherman. You know, like you're you'll be uh, 25 and 0. You know, knocking out knockouts for the uh, earthquake predictions. What does that mean? It means uh, you're a winner. He hasn't seen this Buster Douglas yet. 
Yeah, undefeated. And with the record of 13th in Wisconsin. It is a four-day event which will have live music, great food, and raffles. Which is a new meaning to uh, look at those headlights. And that's the Brandon Houck Report. We're going on a walk. I've gone from about that pile of trees there to about here so far. We're going to keep on going. You can also notice uh, there's some pollutants in the air. A little bit of a moderate air quality index in the area. And that will probably persist for the next couple of days as we've got this inversion in place, keeping the uh, cool air and the pollutants trapped at the surface. However, with high pressure and the strength of the sun now, uh, compared to just a couple of months ago, it's absolutely lovely out here today. And uh, we've got a couple more days of this uh, fairly nice weather and potential for some uh, poor air quality as well. So get out there and enjoy it. Wow. You know, I want to hear about you and 300 women. You're out there in Brooks, Alberta. You're the radio man at uh, 105.7 FM. That's real country radio, but you're on tons of radio stations every day. 
and you're the weatherman and you uh, convinced me to uh, to get this new app tonight and you're probably watching it. So there's thunderstorms and severe weather going on in the southern states right now. Uh, the weather in Western Canada is taking a step sideways, maybe even a little bit backwards in terms of our march towards spring. What do you got for us, Brandon? What are the people in Winnipeg, Kamloops, Brooks, Prince George, Victoria? What are they all got coming to them, buddy? Well, we've had some uh, interesting weather today across British Columbia, scattered showers, snow showers and flurries and higher elevations. And uh, we're watching that system as it moves its way into the province of Alberta tonight. It was a uh, last whole week here. We've had a lot of fog. We've also had some uh, uh, clear skies and temperatures on the cool side for some. Others saw the temperatures warm up as well. And then, uh, this morning we had an incredible display of the Aurora Borealis uh, right over uh, Brooks this morning. So I'll show you a photo of what it looked like this morning at 6 a.m. just before the sun began to rise. And I was supposed to be doing radio, but I ran outside to take that photograph instead. So anyways, and I still was able to get my whole show in. So kind of multitasking earlier today. So that was the Aurora earlier this morning, and it's out again tonight. So uh, I believe it's about a KP7 is what, what, it, what, what it was registered there. Uh, so we are going to get back into the unsettled side of things here in the province of Alberta over the next couple of days with uh, the system moving in out of British Columbia, bringing it with it its unsettled weather. So we'll probably be dealing with, uh, especially in the foothills and Rockies, that's where we're going to be dealing with that uh, potential for convective uh, snow flurry activity for the next number of days. And tomorrow would not rule out a flash of lightning or two on the uh, 24th of March there. And we're going to remain unsettled right through the weekend with um, temperatures cooling off quite, uh, quite not too significantly, but uh, back to the low, right around that freezing mark through the weekend into early next week. So below average temperatures at this time of year, we should be six degrees above the freezing mark. Instead, we're going to be seeing daytime highs around two, one, zero degrees or just slightly below. And that will be the case in the next week as well. And Saskatchewan and Manitoba, they're going to be dealing with a few uh, snow showers here and they're kind of hit and miss. And we'll be dealing with those below seasonal temperatures for the remainder of next week. It doesn't look like we'll see any sign of a warming trend until maybe april-ish so we'll be um watching that very closely there and uh, looks like we've got another pretty good round of snow moving across southern portions of, of alberta probably on monday of next week with uh likely uh five centimeters of snow for a few locations so uh, fairly unsettled cool damp that's the weather for the next week what do you think about this uh uh, tornado threat for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So the tornado threat. So uh, today, I of should th add, we are on, uh, we're recording this on, what is it, the 23rd today? 23rd of March, Thursday. Yep. So if you're hearing us on Monday on the radio, keep in mind, this is a recap of this week's weather. Uh, we can never properly give everyone great forecasts unless you're actually watching us live on the youtube as good as we can so what do you see and uh chronos has commented what about northern indiana uh one of our viewers is in northern indiana so what do you think brandon so yeah it looks like there will be a bit of a severe weather threat in uh parts of indiana nothing too significant uh i'd say more so southern indiana for tomorrow that's where you're gonna run into a few uh thunderstorms there but nothing uh Nothing too wild there. The major severe weather threat is going to be in parts of Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, where we have a, a moderate risk of severe thunderstorms. So tomorrow we could be dealing with tornadoes, including a few strong tornadoes, which could be EF2 or stronger, along with uh, damaging winds gusting to at least, um, possibly uh, wouldn't rule out hurricane straight wind gusts straight line winds here and hail all expected along with the potential for flash of flooding. So uh, all the dyna dynamics are definitely there uh, for supercells to uh, develop through Arkansas tomorrow, producing uh, tornadoes later in the day, it's probably right after four o'clock as that low level jet strengthens rapidly here through the day tomorrow. So it's going to be a, yeah, it's going to be. Well, a lot this is, you see here, this is why, uh, Northern Indiana is not so much at risk for the tornado threats because the low itself is moving right across Northern yeah. Indiana into the Great Lakes region, right? So it will be windy though. 
<laughs> I do recall sure. fondly my time hitchhiking uh, in 1997 through Indiana. The most fireflies I've ever seen anywhere, anytime, mind-bogglingly so. I like, I just could like, I was just exploding in my mind. I couldn't believe it. And we were like hitchhiking on this dark road uh, out of Fort Wayne, heading westward. And it was like two in the morning, and there's no vehicles. It was like pitch black. It's just like forest and farmland and stuff, you know. And then uh, the forest just lit up like it was Christmas. Just <laughs> like I, you know, I've seen fireflies often all my whole life, but uh, yeah. That's where fireflies exist. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, there's not just like, like, yeah, there's fireflies there. Like, no, that's like, it's like where fireflies come from or something. I think, I don't know. There's like so many fireflies. It was, I've never seen anything like it before or since. Um, so yeah, Brandon, uh, anything else you got for us? Uh, I, I do want to get to Joe Stover. He, cause it's, well, I guess I should mention bandits playoffs begin tomorrow for round two against the Okotoks Oilers. So, uh, yeah, that starts tomorrow and that goes on into next week there and depends if they can sweep the Oilers and then uh, we'll go on to the next round afterwards. And we're working our way to the big cup, the National Cup, that's going to be played in Portage La Prairie in May. Nice. Well, that's why I have uh, uh, the Nat and Big Dog hat on and a sh- jersey on and the Leduc Legion uh, hat on because i you know trying to support, but I don't have any Brooks Bandits you know, hats or anything like that. Right. And, uh, you know, I do have a room full of hats and I would wear a Brooks Bandits hat if one came in the mail somehow. Joe Stover, Northern lights are exploding right now. Uh, All over. Ah, ah, ah. Honk. That's my kind of goose. (laughs) (laughs) They are there uh, right now. um, The uh, KP's at seven. Um, And if it wasn't for all this pesky cloud in Churchill, I would, uh, I'd be outside having a look because it's been, it's been phenomenal this year. And uh, right now, um, if you're, if you're watching this on YouTube and you live anywhere kind of in, uh, oh, I don't know, Canada, uh, there's a real good chance if you don't have cloud cover that you'll be able to at least look north and be able to see some, some spectacular lights. And um, they're actually calling for a KP of 10 tomorrow which is uh extremely intense and so i'm really hoping that uh the, the skies clear up so so we can see that i did want to mention you're talking about indiana there's some joe trivia for you the the farthest south that i've ever been is uh, uh the tropical city of gary indiana yeah gary indiana not many people uh can say the farthest south they've been is gary but i'm one of those people um Anywho, yeah, uh, it, Northern Lights have been fantastic. Our our season, uh, the tour company I work for, our season ended on March the 11th. And a lot of folks ask, well, why is that Northern Lights season? Can't you see Northern Lights all year round? Absolutely, you can see Northern Lights all year round. But, um, in, but who wants to? But, <laughs> but who wants to? Yeah, well, in, in January, February, those are the coldest months here. And the colder it is the less cloud cover there is. And as we know, clouds are the natural enemy of the Aurora Borealis. So um, even though you can see them this time of year, um, right now, because we got cloud cover, because it's starting to warm up here, it's about minus, uh, what's the temperature now? So I think it's about minus 19 outside right now, which is pretty good for this time of year. So Check this out, Joe. I'm checking. My cat's been missing all day ever since he went to uh, sit in the mayor's chair. Here in Wells. Hey. And every time I hit record and start streaming, Meowie shows up. Meowie. I didn't have to worry, is Meowie missing? Because I just knew all I gotta do is hit record. And that's here perfect. Come. Continue with your story. I just needed to interject with uh oh, but Meowie yeah. the camera hoggish cat. Meowie gets uh we all know like when we signed our contract with you, Joey, we saw the clause that said Meowie gets top billing. We understand how it goes. Yeah. C L A W S clause. Ah <laughs> yeah. did you Where? see the pictures of him in the mayor's chair today? I didn't. No, you didn't. So he followed me to uh the district office. Wells, BC. We have a new mayor in Wells, BC. His name is Meowie. What's your, what's your first plan, Meowie? Well, I think I'm going to try to increase the population of mice around here. But everyone, leave your food outside. Look, isn't that the cutest thing? He's sitting in the... 
Of all the places in this building he could have sat in, he went and sat in the mayor's chair. That's just, that's hilarious. that is something else. I know that Auntie Angie wouldn't mind having him come in. So I'd come on in. And I was quite a while in there with her. I'd, and it's like, time to go. Finally, after 25 minutes, like, where's Meowie? And I look over and there he is cuddled up. Of all the chairs, there's like 25 chairs. There are 20 chairs or whatever in the Wells office. Or the, it's the district, it's the community municipal office. And there he is sitting on the mayor's chair of all chairs and beautiful. Yeah, you know, we thought that was pretty funny. Good old. So Meowie. sorry for interrupting you, Joey. No, Continue. no, not not at all. And actually, well, if you don't mind me interjecting once more, I see Imogen has a feline friend as well. Who's that? Morbo. Little Morbo is staring up at me, wanting to be picked up. So I picked please, him up. Please tell yeah. me the Morbo is named after the Futurama character. Absolutely. As yes. A baby, as a baby, he looked like the news monster, and he had the same attitude. So, <laughs> the name stuck. So, yeah, not not much else really to go on. Um, things are warming up here in northern Manitoba. Uh, we just finished uh, the Walter Lundy Memorial Hockey Tournament here, which uh, we had a team, just like last year, Snowmobile in from the community of RV at Nunavut. What do you think, uh, what do you think about uh, going into this playoff game here today? Oh, the boys are still, uh, you know, they're still um, peeling a little bit drunk from last night. <laughs> it's a good show, show. It was a real good one, that's for sure. Everybody uh, was having a good time. and uh, Can we move back so we can see faces too, no, Joe? Nobody's, uh, you guys don't have any scratches today, do you? You got everybody here? Just scratches on their backs. <laughs> <laughs> well, part of hockey, you uh, you get a little banged up and whatnot. So I had a bit of a scare the last game, semifinals. Um Got a stick in the eye. Uh, you know, it was a, a play that is, is a hockey play. It happens all the time. And, uh, you know, to the young guy, Russ Matu, keep your head up high. Um, you know, it's, it's hockey. Uh, I, I actually forget how it is to get hit in the face uh, since being retired for four or five years now. So, but all in all, uh, what a great turnout, you know, for for this year. You know, we've been waiting for three years to play in this arena, so. Um. It's a good thing that they're getting away because as the, as the temperature rises, and yes, even minus 14 is still technically a rise, um, you know, that, that plays all sorts of of tricks on the Hudson Bay with the, with the ice out there and the leads and things like that. And, um, you know, a lot of people think, oh, well, the Bay, you know, it freezes over. It must, you guys must be able to, you know, uh, shovel some snow and make a hockey rink. Boy, that would be nice to play hockey out there if it wasn't for those pesky tides, those pesky 15 uh, foot tides. But uh, yeah, we're glad that RV at Made it. They got out of the way. We lost to them in overtime in the third place game. A heartbreaker. I hit the post in the second period. So with that was the puck the, or with yourself? With the puck. With nice. the puck. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I haven't hit myself into a post just yet. But um, yeah, so things are things are good. Uh, we're 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 really looking forward, hopefully, to a slow melt. Like, yes, it's always nice for it to be. Um, warming up around springtime, but what Manitoba really needs is a slow melt. Uh, with the snowfall, significant snowfalls that they've gotten in the in the Dakotas and the Red River Valley in Minnesota as well, they're they're looking at now uh, a major, a possible major flood risk for the Red River Valley uh, coming up. So, what we would really appreciate in all of Manitoba, especially southern Manitoba, I'm sure, is no significant snowfall like they had last April. I think you guys will remember there was like three back to back to back Colorado. Well, that's up. when Manitoba, that's when Winnipeg tipped over its uh, records. Yeah. Well, that was when environment Canada put out that crazy, uh, that weather statement saying that this could be a catastrophic storm of the century and businesses and, and schools preemptively shut down. Thankfully it wasn't, that bad and i'll always you know and then people kind of were like environment canada rrr. it's like you know what better that they said that something was coming than for them not to say something was coming damned if you do damned if you don't that's the thing right that's that's just the way it goes so what what uh, we're all hoping for in the prairies and especially the uh the keystone province is a uh a slow melt so that the so that business can continue as normal and the Manitoba Junior Hockey playoffs can continue uninterrupted because, as Brandon pointed out, um, the home 
for the national championship this year will be Portage La Prairie. And uh, so whoever wins the Manitoba Junior Hockey League uh, championship, which is the, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. My name, the name escapes me. Anywho, whoever wins that will go to Portage along with Portage La Prairie, who will be the hosts. I will not cheer for the Portage La Prairie Terriers. Nothing against Portage, nothing against the Terriers. But, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're rivals for many of the teams that I like in the Manitoba Junior Hockey League. I know I'm rambling, but this is basically what I was going to say is that uh, when, I'm going to say when, when Brooks Bandits, when the Brooks Bandits defend their title in Portage La Prairie, chances are, unless the OCN Blizzard of the Manitoba Junior Hockey League are in that competition, I will throw my full support behind the unofficial hockey team of the Comedia Report, which is the Brooks Bandits. Thank you, Joey. Yes, and I will cheer for any team that Joe doesn't like except for the Brooks Bandits. <laughs> I have two favorite teams, Joey. Actually, I'm, I like Jets. your team, too. I, I was hoping that you hit, didn't hit the post. I wanted you to score this weekend. Uh, and when that, that happened, all of us watching the big game <laughs> uh, on Sportsnet were like, oh, Joe! Yeah, they were probably saying, cut there, cut him, cut him. Mm-hmm. He totally froze there, and it, it was really funny. <laughs> ah, well, uh, before my last word will be, uh, you know, you're talking about you were cheering for me, but I got two, I have two favorite teams uh, for hockey. One is the Winnipeg Jets, and it's anybody that plays the Toronto Maple Leafs. Joey, back to you. Uh, yeah, yeah, funny. <laughs> we won six to two in Florida tonight, by the way. Good. Okay. Beat those so, beat those stalls. Those jerks. So uh there's reason to think that that maybe the melt might be somewhat tempered. I mean, we've had that cold air is kind of still sitting over much of Canada, you know. It's it, I don't see you know a big warm flash coming. So maybe we can get some of that st- melting early during the day but freezing up again at night and that's what you really want right it's kind of like it's like that's what manitoba and ontario have in common right you want that that fluctuation of temperature so that uh ontario has maple syrup and so that uh you guys get to have homes but you yeah you want the same kind of weather and so do we in bc and that's what it looks like it seems to be doing you know hopefully but our melt takes a long time and our peak water levels sometimes aren't until june We haven't talked to Imogen much yet, and it's really important that we do. Imogen Cookie Bailey. This is Darby McDarbleson. It is a beautifully overcast, slightly cloudy, damp day, which is perfect weather to take this little beauty queen to a dog park. Are you a dog? Yep. Mm. Oh, such a sweetheart. We're going to the dog park. Cloudy, overcast, Vancouver Island, damp day on a tropical island with a dog. It's more of the same spongy island tropical weather. Uh, it's on the cloudy side again. Just like last week and the week before and next week, it's a high of 12 and a low of 3. That's where we are. And highlight of the week is that I got to spend some time with dogs. Not my dogs, because I don't own a dog. I just find random dogs and hang out with them. <laughs> Occasionally yes, ask them what's going on in their lives and uh, check out the weather at the dog parks. Sometimes, like, random dogs, like, in the summertime, especially when they have the door open, yep. just walk into my house and hang out for, like, a couple hours and then get up and leave. Yeah, that's how you get a dog. You just open a door and a dog walks in. It's kind of fun. But so, we don't need no dogs around here, do we, Meowie? This guy. <laughs> this is wow, a hair cat. Oh, he's so awesome. You know what? Hairy animals are a novelty to me. All of my pets, I don't have any animals with hair, so... They're, they're exotic to me. Morbo is hairless. I have a frog. You don't see a lot of hairy frogs. I'm just stoked that I got to hang out with dogs. My little dog video that's on TikTok is now at like 76,000 plays, which it's still moving. It's still getting kicked around. I didn't expect that. I thought like three that's people so, would watch it. It's so unfair that your, your dog video gets 76,000 plays and I put <laughs> hours of work into like a video and it gets like 76 plays. Well, to be fair, it's it's a cute dog. The people so in am I, and I got a, I got a big dog on my jersey tonight. Yeah, you do. Well, no. you know what? Maybe this one will get. I was around. a big dog. I played right wing on that team all season. Well, maybe this video will get kicked around YouTube a little bit more than the last one. I doubt it. 
Frankie, have you ever had any pets? Uh, my grandparents got two Pomeranians. They're then they yak and they go for walks, things like this. They're doing great so far. Pomeranian dogs. What have you ever had a pet before? No. Never in your whole life? No. My my family members got two Pomeranians. So okay, hold on, hold on. Frankie, if you've never had a pet, who chases your mailman? Uh the Potter, my family's dog barks at the mailman. Yeah, I like I think Frankie needs a dog best friend. Like it just seems so perfect for you. I could just imagine Frankie doing his forecast videos with a dog hanging out with him. Yeah. Absolutely. Walking your dog in the park making forecast videos. And a week from this Tuesday coming up, I got an interview with Don and Mantis at 7 p.m. 6 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. Late to time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Don and Mantis podcast. You tell them hi for me, okay? Yes. And guess okay. what? I got an interview with Jamie Klump on Wednesday, March 29th at 7 p.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Late time. You make sure you say hi to them for Joe Stover. Yes. And uh, this week, Brandon and I both got our Frankie McDonald bobbleheads showed up on the exact same day. Here we go. Yeah. Exact right. same day. One green. Day. I got the very last green one, and Frank and Brandon got the orange one, and 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 he's orange, and I'm pretty green, so that makes sense. Yes, yes, it's a happy day in Wells, BC. Being prepared. How's the weather today, Norma? It's sunny, it's warm, and the snow is evaporating as well as melting, so that makes it good both ways. Yeah, we need the evaporation, otherwise it just stays frozen tonight. That's right. What could possibly be at the post office today? <laughs> oh my. <gasps> oh my. It's the talking Frankie McDonald bobblehead. Prepare. The snowbank in Wells. This is spring in Wells. Look how spring it is today. This isn't a pile of snow. This is the snowbank. This is the snowbank. Yeah, you're like 25 feet up there. Yes, my friends, it's springtime in Wells, BC. Can't you tell? Look at the spring. Springy, springy, springtime air. What time of year is it? Um, spring. Yes. Spring. Correct. Be prepared. Yeah, be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. Ready? Oh. Oh. What else does he say? Say hi, Joe only. Let's see what else he says. Joe only fights fires. He's a really well known firefighter in British Columbia. He fights fires. He runs a YouTube channel in a podcast called Terrible Weather Doom. To be your plus meteorology. Hey, talking Frankie McDonald bobblehead. What do you think of Wells so far? I think Wells is a very good place. Joey always a real nice guy. Make sure you listen to the Comedological Report every week. <laughs> so, okay, I have a question. Now, right now, there is a 5,000 mile long uh, strip of sargassum seaweed heading for the Florida coast. It's going <laughs> to just like overtake all the beaches and whatnot, which is kind of awesome, really, because the beaches are going to reek so bad of rancid seaweed. Now, using the power of the Frankie bobbleheads, how many bobbleheads in an army would it take to fight off the belt of seaweed? So many of them. A thousand, maybe? A thousand, maybe, to face against them. A 5,000 mile belt of seaweed. Got some seaweed, yeah. Yeah. And they'd, need, and they'd need, really need to be. Work, Imogen. I'd never want to be bobbling. This yeah. is outside my knowledge base. This a lot is of interesting. seaweed in Florida. That means bad news for swimmers. I never, I didn't even know, I never heard of the word sargassum before. I just thought I was sarcastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's that, uh, it's that seaweed that looks like it's got little berries on it, like it's got little floaty bits. Um, it, yeah, when it washes up, you stomp on it and it pops. So when it dries, it kind of crackles and pops on the beach and it makes that neat little rice crispy snap crackle poppy sound. That's the, it has a name. It's not just that gross stuff that you trip on or whip at your little sister. It's uh, 
but there is a huge, huge, like massive flotilla of it, a, literally a 5,000 mile long belt of it. It's, there was a huge seaweed bloom because of the weather. Florida, I guess, got a little bit of extra warmth, big seaweed bloom, and now it's all detached and it's floating towards the shores. So Love says uh, Rick Florida. Lumpkin, the director of physical oceanography division at National Oceanographic and Air Go Space Air Agency. It's a dynamic, constantly changing set of pieces of this large mass. It's not one continuous blob heading straight to South Florida. That's how he oh, said obviously, it. Obviously, guy. That's how he obviously said it. Obviously, it's not. It, it's a I whole don't know. burden of it. It's No, I mean, like, the guy who's reporting that it's not one long, continuous piece. I mean, it, it's a garden of seaweed, but it's, like, just big chunks from these different gardens of seaweed all along <coughs> the ocean where they detach from. They've detached. They've let go. Their, their roots aren't holding. They're just floating around, being seaweeds. Waiting to be eaten by a whale or whatever eats seaweed. Hippies. Right. To be Says, fair, uh, I eat seaweed. There's a, professor, uh, there's a professor of oceanography at the University of South Florida named Chuanam Hu, and he said, What is unusual this year compared to previous years is it started early. This winter, in the winter, we already have a lot. That's, what, that's how yeah, he said it's Florida. It. Well, that yeah. that is he does he double as a uh, professional wrestler? Uh yeah, that's what's Florida. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. It's it's. It, I think DeSantis passed a law that you have to also um, have mandatory oh. service as a professional wrestler. Oh, it was that was in place long before DeSantis. I mean, Florida <laughs> man has been a legend for decades. Florida man, the superhero <laughs> we all need in the news, making headlines. Our Every day. Sargasm yeah. can be dangerous to human health. Sargasm can release ammonia and hydrogen sulfide. Sargasm can smell like rotten eggs. Sargasm can make people sick. But prolonged exposure, especially those with respiratory industries, can be dangerous. And uh, who said, It can be an issue for hotel workers! And others who spend hours removing the decomposing sargasm from beaches. I mean, realistically, if they just hired a whole lot of ocean goats to go along and eat it, then that'd be great. I mean, goats are good for farming. They're good for all sorts of uh, yard work. But they need the specific ocean goats to deal with the ocean vegetables that are washing up on shore. Ocean goats, that's right. In 25 million yeah. years, they'll be like dolphins, except like a goat variety. Well, yeah. And Instead if, of if, like, ee, they'll be like, eh, 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 eh. Right? Sargasm is a catch-all term that can be used to refer to more than 300 species of brown algae, brother. Brother! <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> when adrift at sea, the algae can have upsides for ocean life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The floating habitat provides food and protection for fishes, mammals, marine birds, crabs, and more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my macho man. That, that, yeah, yeah. Put it out his whole. Oh yeah, right? dig it, Miss Elizabeth. Tell me more about the sargasm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's already affected the travel industry. Yeah, before traveling to coastal areas this spring or summer, research whether sargasm is at your destination. Or might show up there, yeah. Plan ahead so your vacation won't disappoint, yeah. I got a government report here. It says, uh, you know, the brown algae shark is abundant in the ocean. <coughs> this is fun. Good job. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We learned a lot about sargasm tonight. And uh, <laughs> this is your sargastic show. More than I ever <laughs> wanted to know. Yeah. Yeah. Rancid well, I was just sitting around last week being like, what do I not know about? Yeah. And I was like, I know. Sargasm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Bring on the sargasm. You're mm. welcome for that one, by the way. <laughs> that's, We're going that's through Florida good. stories here. That doesn't oh, have to oh, be yeah. a Florida story. Well, well oh. and, and, and if those haven't done it... Um, the I, I've only ever done it once, but I had a, a real good hoot. You guys have heard of like the Florida Man Challenge, right? Oh, oh yeah. No. So, oh, so I can't. Sorry, so, I've done it already. No. So the Florida Man Challenge is you go, you just go to Google, type yeah. in Florida Man, and then type in your birthday. Oh, 
and then and then whatever story comes up like that's your that's your your florida man spirit animal so i mean it's been been a while oh, since I've done it now. It. Hold on. <laughs> I need to know what Florida man did on my birthday. Any okay, of my birthdays. So here's here's my We got lightning facts when you're ready, but you continue. Oh. Florida okay. man dies inside suitcase, girlfriend charged after claiming they were playing hide and seek. Okay, I'll go. That was my Florida man. The Florida man arrested after hiding drugs in his belly button. <laughs> <laughs> any further than that <laughs> <laughs> good call yeah this one i'm not even gonna read out loud Ugh. uh florida man shoots alligator okay that's one of the ones he did on my birthday neat i mean not all that spectacular because florida and i feel like the threat of alligators you might you know kind of get risk being eaten once in a while so that's not that crazy it's pretty tame for a florida man story i know well, the other one was, eh, 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 no. Was, was not so tame? <laughs> it was just ugly. Florida man. Ah, here we go. Florida man denies syringes found in rectum are his. <laughs> well, we saw yesterday, eh, Brandon, in North Vancouver, there's a, a man who's uh, wanted. They released a sketch. <laughs> oh, yes. And, uh, he's wanted for setting porta potties on fire. He's been burning porta potties going around burning porta potties down oh. in North Vancouver. I don't know how many porta potties are in North Vancouver. Um, I, I didn't realize cities were abundant in porta potties, but if you leave one just laying around, this guy's going to burn it down. What a little stinker. <laughs> That's yep, the obvious. The zebra has run loose in Seoul, Korea. Zebra on the loose. And uh yeah. They get a lot of zebras and giraffes in Africa so far. In Virginia, two inmates escaped jail uh, using oh, primitively made tools to create a hole in their wall and escape. They uh, were found four hours later at an IHOP restaurant nearby, and patrons reported them. Just going back to the zebras, what's the chance of a zebra being the one to light the porta potties on fire? Like Is a referee? <laughs> well, yeah, why not? They're, they're keeping score. <laughs> <laughs> Ride right off my friggin' roof, like I do every year. Some years I jump naked off my roof into the deep powder snow, but I didn't have anyone around to film it when the snow was right. Now, if you jump off the roof, you just hit hard snow because everything's settling and it's it's springtime in Wells. <laughs> uh, I hate when I blow a good punch slide. Yeah! As you can see, you pick up a lot of speed on a GT when you go off your roof. There you go. Hey. Go straight to the top. Yeah, go to the scariest part. It's good to sit as far back as you can. And that way you have them, your weight spread out the most. Woo! In Colorado, a uh, mountain lion clawed a man in a hot tub. They were, uh, officials are searching for a mountain lion who clawed a man's head while he was sitting in a hot tub with his wife at a rental home in central Colorado. So they went right for his head. Was the man's wife the the cougar that clawed him? I was. I was uh, it does like, not indicate so. It says mountain lion. It did not say I'm the word mountain cougar. lion. Was he married yeah. to a mountain lion? This uh, indicates safe. definite feline. And if he tried uh, to if biology, he tried, yeah, if he tried to put his wife mountain lion in the hot tub, I can understand why she clawed him. Cats don't usually like hot tubs. Millions of dead fish have uh, washed up amid a heat wave in Australia. And uh, because of depleted oxygen levels in the rivers, an African snail was found in luggage at a Michigan airport. Those things are huge. I still Ooh. want a bunch of them. They're not legal in North America because they're so destructive. And like they will just ravage an entire countryside in like an hour. Like two of them. They're big. Like they get to be like, you know, I don't know, big, like at least a foot long or three feet or 12. As far as I'm concerned, they're 15 feet long. But the African snails, like they're... I want one so bad. They're so big and they're so slimy. Okay. <laughs> Germany has detained 42 people 
and a crackdown on gangs that are suspected on blowing up cash machines. Blowing up the asset is counterproductive to stealing. <laughs> that was the shortest Ocean's Eleven movie I've ever seen. <laughs> on March 14th, part of a mall roof in Duluth, Minnesota collapsed because of the weight of snow. And uh, a retrial has been ordered for an 87-year-old boxer, ex-boxer, on death row in Japan. What's he on trial for? Why is he on death row? You need more information in that headline, Joey. Context. His murder conviction was based on forced confessions and fabricated evidence, it says. He's been five decades in jail. Okay, so murder conviction. See, so lead with that, man. A boxer convicted of murder on death row would be the good start. In more weather news, a New Hampshire lawmaker has been arrested for obstructing a snowplow. He was arrested for screaming and swearing at a snowplow truck operator, and the operator recorded the confrontation. Uh, so I'm sure this is another example of a plow just plowing someone's property in, and this guy thought he was above the law because he helps make the law, but he's not. He's just an idiot like everyone else. One of us. One of us. Google gobble. Google One gobble. of us. <laughs> Final news. The cocaine cat that escaped its owner will forever now live at the Cincinnati Zoo. It's an African servo cat that was found with cocaine in its system after it escaped at a traffic stop. Uh, it now calls the Cincinnati Zoo home. Much to the light to uh, social media users who are very amused by it, the cocaine cat. So yeah. that's the show for this week, everybody. Anyways, Frankie Thank McDonald, you. how does everyone find you on the internet? My Twitter is at Frankie MacD. My Facebook is Frankie MacDonald. My Instagram is Frankie MacD1984. My TikTok is Frank Donald 84 My Clapper is Frankie Donald 84 My Twitch is Frankie Donald 84 My LinkedIn is Frankie MacDonald. And my Snapchat is Frankie MACD1. And my YouTube channel is Dogs Wolves. Best luck to you, Frank Donald. You're listening to me, me, Roger Guerrero Report every Thursday nights. I will see all you, all you guys who will see me on Base Guy Show to Friday at. 4 p.m. Atlantic time, 3 p.m. Eastern time, 12 p.m. Pacific time. You make sure to say hi to Bass Guy for Imogen. Yeah. I'm Joey Only. This is the Joey Only show. No, it's the Comedological Report, and it's a show with Brandon Howick and Imogen Cookie Bailey, Joe Stover, and the main star, Frankie McDonald. I am your host, Joey. You've been hearing us on the radio, on TV, Shaw Spotlight. Thanks for stopping on by this week. If you're hearing us on the YouTube Thanks for stopping on by. You can always find the show Joey Only Caribou Weather Dude. Until then, we'll see you next time with all the weirdest weather news we can dig up right here on the Comedy Meteorology Report. Have yourselves a good week, everybody. You can find Imogen, Imogen.in online. Joe Stover, you, what's your coordinates these days? You don't have a website or nothing. Neither does Brandon Hell. How come you guys don't get websites? I, I, I think I'm going to get a website one of these days. But until then, if you're interested in any of the nonsense I have to say, just uh, follow me on Twitter, Joe Churchill. I can't get into my Twitter anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. See you next time, gay. everybody. I love you yeah, all. Bye. Later. Bye for now. Yeah. Joey Holy, bye. Say hi, Joey Holy. Hi, Joey Holy. Say hi. I'm Frank Dow. You're listening to me, Ross, where we're report every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. Joey Holy fights fires. He's firefighter over oh, Wells, British Columbia. Joey Holy is a really nice guy. He fights fires in Wells, British Columbia. Joey Holy fights fires and he runs a podcast called Comedian Plus Meteorology every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time on his YouTube channel, Careful What to Do, Joey Holy Show. And I'm on Joey Only Show every Thursday night on. And it's also on the CFUR 88.7 FM, Chris George, CKUW 95.9 FM in Winnipeg, and CFBX 92.5 FM, the Cable Chris Columbia. I'm on Shaw TV all across Canada. And I'm on Shaw Spotlight TV all across Canada, which only only show. Joey only is a really nice guy. He used to work for Fango for Giants Western Hockey League team. It's a major junior hockey league. Joey only is a really nice guy. He fights fires in British Columbia. And Joey only is a really, really nice dude. He's a really nice guy. He fights fires. Terrible weather to do every Thursday night on his YouTube channel at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. Check out Joey Only. Terrible weather to do. Best luck to you. I'm Frank Dow. You're listening to Joey Only Show every Thursday night. Say hi, Joey Only. Hi, Joey Only.